This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. All right, so today we're going to talk about a condition that we see every once in a while, but when we do see it, we just have to make sure that we're managing it properly, and that's rhabdo. So you know, rhabdomyolysis is something that occurs with muscular cell death, and so with that cell death, myoglobin is released from the cells. Normally, myoglobin is bound to a protein, and it carries oxygen for our muscle cells, and it's bound to proteins, and then um, isn't really filtered as, uh, as much by the kidney. But once you get to uh, higher levels of myoglobin, there's not enough protein, and it's unbound, and then it becomes filtered by the kidney. The kidney can filter to a certain point, and then once it gets to that point, it starts damaging the kidney cells and then can cause renal failure. So that's kind of the physiology of what happens. So kind of main causes of it, what do you guys think of when you hear about, when you think of someone who has rhabdo, what are the big causes you think of? Coming down for long periods of time. Yeah. Excessive exercise. Yep, excessive exercise, being found down, crush injuries, severely elevated temperatures, drugs like so toxins is a big one. And then uh, infection is also on there. And then muscle ischemia is the other part. So actually that's one of the most common causes is someone having like an arterial occlusion which causes ischemia and then you don't get flow to those cells and those cells die. Crush injuries or traumatic injuries is once you start perfusing those areas again, that's when you get the sudden rush, right? And kind of that worsening rhabdo. And so other things to think about are meds. And so some of the most common meds that can cause it are antipsychotics, statins, um, right, that's the one we we hear about in the news all the time. SSRIs are on there as well, and then colchicine and lithium are the two other ones. You know, that just like if you have a patient who comes in and you know muscle pains, just think about those things uh, with, with meds. So as far as evaluation goes, like the mainstay on this is checking a CK, right? So if the CK is really elevated, um, you should be concerned and. CK elevation, there's a no real good consensus of like how high is bad, right? So like they used to use like five times, the American Heart Association says 10 times. And so it's kind of all relative. Either way, when they're, you know, severely elevated, you should be checking, you know, the rest of things, which is EKG, renal function, you know, CMP, um, make sure you're, you're checking a phosphate too, because things that can happen with cell death, right, hyperkalemia, and that goes along with renal failure, right? So EKG looking for T waves. CMP looking for your elevated potassium, and then also um, your phosphate levels can, can be up. And so you want to serially check these EKGs because renal function can worsen you know, pretty quickly. And so mainstay of treatment for this is IV fluid resuscitation, right? And so these guys, large volumes of IV fluid. And probably want to just put a Foley in these patients that are having rhabdo because you want to be able to track their urine output. So your goal is about 300 mils per hour of urine output. You know, some people would do it based on weight, but like an easy thing in the ED is just like, we're trying to get 300 mils an hour. So keep increasing fluids um, until you're getting to that good output level. Um, And then, you know, there's a, the old way of doing it, and it's still used in many places, is the use of bicarb, right, in the fluids, right? And the idea is you alkalinize the urine that helps unclear as to whether that's actually um, beneficial, but we still do it. In severe cases where patients are really sick and critically ill, mannitol is also something that we turn to as a, another augmentation. And then if these patients end up in severe renal failure with no output, they're going to end up on dialysis. Um, so big things on rhabdo is just being able to recognize it, knowing what are the things I should be looking for, especially if you get a presentation, just keep in the back of your mind that I should think about rhabdo in this patient. And then management and, and making sure you're aggressive with IV fluid resuscitation. And that's it. The Emergency Medical Minute would like to thank our sponsor, Swedish Medical Center, for helping fund our nonprofit organization and make this podcast possible. Donations are essential to our organization to cover operational costs and fund the creation of our online courses offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits. So if you enjoy our show, And if you're able to make a one-time or recurring donation towards our organization, any amount is helpful. Please click the link in our show notes to make a donation. 
Thank you for listening.